Yo guys, this game is against Viego mid lane in D1 MMR. I like going Conqueror because it helps me a lot in the all-ins, after level 6 especially. And Ignite is also very very good. They have Mordekaiser in the jungle and Atrox top as well. So the runes help a lot against those champs too. So let's see how this game goes. So one thing I want to show you is when you go to ward the Wraiths, if you see their jungler like I did there, then you might want to ward the entrance to your jungle. If your jungler starts on the opposite side, because your jungler is going to path towards there and just in case Mordekaiser goes for an invade, you will probably be able to see the um, guy on the ward, depending on where he comes from. And against Viego, you want to be careful of his passive. Um, so when he hits Q, you don't want to let him auto attack you. Right here, I'm thinking about how to use the minions to aggro onto him, which they do. So he, he took like three uh, minion attacks. So I just start going in thinking I'll probably win. Um, and then I'm like, wait. I'm taking a bit more minion attacks, but then somehow I end up winning anyways because I have cut down and scorch, which did an extra 40 damage uh, to help me win. So that's kind of just a flip. I don't know what I was doing really. Um, <laughs> usually you should play a bit more safe, but you can do stuff like that when you have Conqueror. You know, just go all in, um, kind of YOLO, especially if you have Ignite and Scorch like I do right there, uh, as well as cut down. I push the wave straight away because I know I can shove it and I can base and I have boots and longsword and I need to do that because I don't have teleport to cheat my way back. So now I come back to lane and of course the wave is pushing towards me. I troll a bit by using my W um, on Viego. Instead I should use it to try and thin the wave. Just like Viego is trying to push which I mean he's doing the right thing and I'm doing the wrong thing because I just need to thin it. Because I'm going to look to... Um, freeze the wave. Luckily, the Viego is kind of a noob, so he walks away and lets me hold the wave. And the reason why I do that is because I know my jungler is going to come mid, or his pathing is going to line up. 3 minutes 30 on the mid gank, so he does an EQ flash. When he EQ'd, I was like, oh, he missed EQ, but then he flashes. I'm like, wow, so good. But yeah, and then I push, so just being cognizant of where your jungler is, is helpful, because I knew that if I hold the wave there, then you know, this is the timing for my jungler to gank because, you know, he's not going to miss any camps and it's pretty free. And right here, I realized that I need pickaxe, so I take another wave, even though it's cannon. Um, I was kind of just thinking about the death timers getting uh, nerfed, buffed. I don't know, the death timers are longer. So, yeah, we can push that and we can go to base just on time. And now I want to show you guys the power of freezing. You know, especially in the early game where the levels are more sensitive. So right here, Viego failed to push because I poked him out a bit, which gave me a chance to hold the minions. I know he's going top, so I ping missing, and then I ping top lane to back out. And I also checked my wave, so if you saw, I panned the camera to my wave before I ran up and held the minions, because I want to see if it's a cannon minion wave, and if it is, then it's good to hold it. Uh, even better because there's a lot of XP um, being lost. The cannon is a lot of XP as opposed to a non-cannon wave. And then I pinged Rakan to stand in the bush as well. So even though Rakan is wasting time, it's completely fine because Seraphine is not in lane. He's walking back. And yeah, Viego shows top. He misses this whole cannon wave. So he's very, very far behind. I just want to show you guys this trick, I guess. And then right here, when he's coming back, I make a mistake as well. So... You should thin the wave when you think the enemy is coming back because you don't want them to get the shove of a lot of minions under your tower. So I didn't because I'm greedy in terms of like making the enemy miss minions because if you kill less minions, then the wave will push towards you faster. So it's good to thin it out and then I thin it because Viego is noob and I mean he saw Jarvan as well so it's fine. Um, and I see Nami but I'm still not too scared because I have two level advantage. Just ult on his W. Then I see Mordekaiser, I'm like, ah, oh, this is a bit bad, but then he dives me, so I fail flash over his ability, but I managed to kill him and take my W at the same time to get away from both of them, or all three of them, I guess. And since Viego is quite weak, I can stay and kind of defend and push as well. So yeah, I got a two, two level lead now. Um, it was like a one-ish level lead, I think, before the freeze, so it's just going to get bigger and bigger if you keep doing those kind of moves. And so I'm pushing the cannon wave thinking that I'm going to base afterwards because surely Viego based. But he doesn't. So I channel recall to make him lower his guard knowing that Jarvan is like at the wraith camp. So that's also something you can do. 
It's pretty straightforward. Just psychologically, if you recall like that, then they'll think that you're not going to attack. So, yeah, we kill him. We get the next wave and the plating. I end up doing a bad Rome bot where I could kind of try to dive the Mordekaiser, but it's pretty dangerous. I would go like one for one. So instead, I go back to mid, and something you should realize is staying in lane and keeping control of your own lane is way more important when you're ahead. So Viego is kind of illegally pushing. We just go in, we kill him. We go in and we kill him, but it's better to stay in lane so he doesn't get like the free push like that. Um, so if I just hid in the bush or something and then just went out and killed him, it would have been better than roaming. So that's something about roaming that... You should be really wary of is that it's kind of complicated in some ways so just literally pushing and then hiding in the bush for the next wave um can be much better and then my javan died to grubs but it's fine i'll get them so now i'm pretty fed i'm just hitting the tower we see mordekaiser in the river and i know i want to take the red buff and using w backwards against viego is pretty good um that's one way of doing it like just w wing and then he w's in and you E and you Q, or you can just do it a bit more aggressively so that you get two Qs to hit if you place your W closer, but it's more dangerous. But in general, using W backwards against Viego and champs that go into you is really good. Right there, I ult the Mordekaiser because he's running towards the wall as if he would flash. So that's an important thing to do at Zed, especially in lower elos, because usually they'll just flash without waiting for your ult. But in high elo, they will probably try to bait your ult first and then flash. But if they run towards the wall, the wall very obviously then it's best to just use your ult um and yeah so i have a three level lead against viego as well by the way um from all like the tricks and like killing him a bunch i guess as well so i mean the freeze was very very good because i'm about to hit level 12 as well so it's a very solid three level lead and then i realized that platings are down so i can go for this tower I dodge this w and i hit my q's and right here i e but then i don't q because i know i need to e again to get my W back up and then I use my W and then when I use my W I realized my auto attack was not in rage so I just flashed. Luckily I got his flash as well. Full level lead now. So I end up roaming bot and then Seraphine teleports in for some reason so I'm like oh well we should try to dive them and a trick I can show you guys right here is sometimes it's really good to just pretend to hit something so I pretend to hit the tower and then you know it gives the enemy confidence to walk up so the Nami wasn't really paying attention. And that kind of trick actually works more often than not. So it's honestly not too bad. Like pretend to hit the minion and go in or pretend to hit the tower and go in. Like these kind of strats. Honestly, they're not too shabby. And right here with the Mordekaiser, I know that I'm about to die. So I have to be careful, but we kill him as well. So we take that tower and everything and I start recalling. But then I realize I should run further. I get spotted. And Lucian trolls. So combo I want to show you here is WQW and then profane when you're right outside uh, auto attack range. So if you run profane, it's very good to do that because it will save you like from dying a lot of times. That extra range is really, really good. Although I think it's getting nerfed. So that's kind of sad. So now I want to show you guys why it's kind of important to be careful using your energy as I spam these little spells on the Krux. They show up. So I'm thinking it's pretty fine. But then I don't get the energy refund on the Nami because she died too fast. And I'm pretty sure I would have killed all three of them if I did. But if I wasn't on the Krugs in the first place and if I read them better, then I would be in the bush and killing everyone. But they shouldn't really be there when, you know, mid is getting pushed in and all that good stuff as well. Now my team is sieging mid, which is a bit bad because Jarvan and Gwen aren't there. Then I find the Viego. And something I want to show you right here is I notice my W needs to come back up. So I E the Viego before he dies, even though he was dead to the death mark. So I can get my W like that. Play some shadows to damage the enemy bot lane so they can't collapse too hard. And that's something you can do when you ult in and you know you have an ult shadow. Just W W and then take the ult shadow. And then use your spells like that from a safe distance to do a bunch of damage. So something I want to show you, when you're sieging the enemy inhibitor towers, you can stand in fog, like right here. And then I just combo the Lucian. I missed a Q, which is why he survived, which is fine. But the gist of it is to stand um, in between their base gate and, like, the entrance to their inhibitor tower. And, you know, sweep that area and try to catch them out from fog. It's much, much easier than just standing in uh, vision of the enemy team. Now I see the Atrox is 
taking the wraiths. I take it at the last second just to piss him off as much as possible. And right here, I know my damage is decently enough. It's actually quite close, but my red buff got him. Now I'm extremely fed with 17 kills, so I just want to try and make a montage play. We just go straight on the Nami. And then I realized she lived with 1 HP, so I flash E auto attack, get my W again, alt the Lucian. And I miss my Qs on the Viego because I just panic. I was like, oh, who should I hit? But at least I survive and, you know, I kill their bot lane and, and all that good stuff, yeah. I'm so good. It's definitely not because I've 20 kills. But yeah, um, now we just siege to end. I think I get another kill. So you have to wait back, you know, when you're fed and you're trying to siege. Wait for the opportunities like there. And yeah, we end the game off that. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope it was useful. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. In